Transmission received. O5 Council ID detected. Plane log now. Item number SCP-009. Colloquially named Red Ice. Object class Euclid. Special Containment Procedures Object is to be contained within a sealed storage tank of heat-resistant alloy with dimensions not less than 2 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters. Under no circumstances should SCP-009 be exposed to temperatures in excess of 0 degrees Celsius when not undergoing testing and no water-based solutions shall be allowed within 30 meters of the object's containment area. Object's chamber is to be fitted with temperature sensors which must be monitored at all times and is to be kept refrigerated by no fewer than three redundant cooling units. Any malfunction of sensors or of coolant systems is to be reported and repaired immediately. If at any time the temperature in the containment area climbs above negative 5 degrees Celsius, the chamber is to be locked down and flooded with coolant until temperatures return to safe levels, negative 30 degrees Celsius to negative 25 degrees Celsius. Containment area is to be kept in total vacuum during testing, and personnel interacting with SCP-009 must wear full environmental protection gear. Following testing, all equipment, personnel, and other materials must undergo dehydration procedures and be quarantined for no less than 12 hours. Any moisture found displaying properties of SCP-009 is to be quarantined and added to the containment area as soon as possible. Living organisms found to be contaminated by SCP-009 are to be terminated by chemical desiccation and extracted molecules of SCP-009 added to containment. Description SCP-009 is approximately liters of a substance which superficially resembles distilled water, H2O except with a distinct bright red hue. This red hue is discernible in all phases and serves as the most expedient method of identifying contaminated matter before its anomalous properties manifest. In contrast to mundane water, SCP-009 assumes a liquid phase at temperatures between negative 100 degrees Celsius and 0 degrees Celsius, and a solid state above those temperatures. At temperatures below negative 100 degrees Celsius, SCP-009 vaporizes into a gaseous phase similar to steam. Examinations of the atomic structure of SCP-009 has proven inconclusive. The substance appears to be identical to normal water molecules, with the exception of in contrast to standard laws of enthalpy. Dr. Cite resident expert on xenospatial physics suggests that SCP-009 may originate in a universe with alternate physical laws. The most hazardous property of SCP-009, however, is its ability to contaminate normal H2O. When in contact with any aqueous solution, SCP-009 will, through unknown mechanisms, transfer its anomalous properties to other objects and creatures. Testing has shown it capable of assimilating ice, steam, tea, fruit juice, seawater, blood, and The time it takes for this process to occur varies depending on temperature and the exact chemical composition of affected matter. Experiments on D-Class personnel have illustrated 
the process of conversion by the substance which has been found to follow a consistent pattern. 1. Initial Exposure Subject is exposed to SCP-009 and it begins assimilating any moisture present on the exposed surface. Creatures in this stage do not commonly notice any unusual symptoms except for a slight warming sensation. 2. Surface Conversion Frost begins to form on the exposed area as the heat produced by the subject and SCP-009 itself raises its temperature above 0 degrees Celsius. This stage can take anywhere from 1 minute to hours, during which time subjects begin to feel crystals from the epidermis. 3. Deep Tissue Conversion Exponential increase in temperature of SCP-009 causes runaway reactions throughout subject's body, resulting in Actual blood loss is minimal due to ice crystals allowing subjects to remain alive and conscious for up to hours. 4. Testing on D-Class personnel was discontinued as of April 23rd, 20. Addendum. Circumstances of retrieval. Subject was found in Alaska on November 5th, 19. The Foundation became involved after reports were obtained from the native tribe who came across the mangled bodies of a team of seal hunters which had apparently been shipwrecked kilometers from the village. All victims were found encased in red ice. Cause of death recorded as internal bleeding, though closer examination found it was surmised that the low ambient temperatures in the area retarded the freezing process. This prolonged the time to total conversion by hours and allowed the victims to remain conscious until Origin of SCP-009 is currently unknown. Investigation into similar events or materials in the area is ongoing. Evidence at the scene suggests possibly involving SCP. See Exploration Log A009 1 for details. Addendum November 9th, 19. After initial report and retrieval of specimens, it was confirmed that the arachnoid entity found by MTF Beta 7 was indeed a previously unknown instance of SCP 3023. Investigation has revealed the instance originated in as a result of Addendum December 6th, 19. After repeated inquiries, it should be noted that the portion of coastline upon which the initial victims were found was barren rock approximately meters from the seashore and was sufficiently dry and cold to prevent significant contamination of the surrounding area. Had the site been closer to the water, there is little doubt an extinction level event would have ensued. Consideration of upgrading SCP-009 to Keter class is under review. Addendum, December 16th, 2000. Super cooling of SCP-009 for the purposes of experimentation is disallowed until further notice. Personnel are advised that liquid nitrogen is only to be used on the subject in controlled amounts and only until temperatures have reached acceptable levels. Related note, possible application of SCP-009 in cold fusion research pending evaluation. Memo from O5 Command, January 9th. 
2000. We've decided to keep this thing Euclid for now. We understand the concerns raised, but as long as you keep the power on and nobody goes near its containment area, there shouldn't be a problem. That's why we're keeping it in sight, after all. As for the cold fusion research, we're putting a pin in that for now. Frankly, we don't have it in the budget for another snafu like Sight. The salvage team still hasn't found Dr. The following experiment record was recovered via a chance occurrence of SCP-507 shifting into a universe in which the described test was carried out using SCP-107. The applicability of the reported findings to our own universe is pending review. Input 10 milliliters of SCP-009 Result quote, Red snow unquote, fell in test area for 27 minutes with moderate intensity. Grass growing in test area began runaway reaction which ended with entire area being quote, frozen unquote, within minutes. Notably, Anti-enthalpathic reaction of SCP-009 did not extend past the effective radius of SCP-107 for reasons still under investigation. Non-grass plants in area turned bright red in color, greatly expanded, and mutated to display cyan-colored quote, tentacles unquote, similar to those of species Drosera capensis. Mucilage produced by these tentacles later found to be tiny beads of SCP-009. How the plant is able to survive with SCP-009 integrated into its cell structure is currently under investigation. With preliminary hypothesis being the plant is a reflection of flora from the substance's native universe. SCP-009 Exploration Log A-0091 Exploration Log November 5th, 19 Situational Report Mobile Task Force Beta-7 the Has Matters was deployed to recovery site to catalog and safely retrieve samples of SCP-009 for transport to site. Agent Bryce made a visual inspection of the area and noted three bodies, all male, between the ages of and 40 years. Dr. Also on site, surmised from the relative position of subjects that Mr. Age 32, hereafter referred to as Subject Zero, was the origin point of Subsequent subjects are presumed to have been exposed to SCP-009 while attempting to help Subject Zero back to the wreckage of the boat during standard perimeter sweep. Agent Hughes located what appeared to be humanoid tracks leading northeast. After brief deliberation, a three-man team consisting of Agent Hughes, Whitmore, and Cassidy was dispatched to investigate potential security breach. Begin log 6.42.43 Eastern Standard Time. The following is a transcript of the audio log. Audio has been corrupted. Playing transcript now. Agent Hughes, we found something. Control, it's a cave. The tracks lead inside. Control. Copy Hughes, what do you see? Hughes, looks like a crack in the ice. It's maybe a meter tall. The opening's not very wide. Agent Whitmore. Captain, we got a body. Unidentified shuffling noises are heard. Control. We didn't copy, Hughes. Repeat. Hughes, there's a subject here. Control. Frozen in the skip. Male, about 15. Looks like he was trying to crawl away from something. There's a spear gun here. Also frozen. It's been fired. 
control. Any signs of trauma? There is a pause. Agent Cassidy. Without touching him, I can't be sure. But it looks like he was stabbed by something. See how he's gripping his chest here? Right where the spike is growing out. He might have been attacked. Hughes, did you hear her, Control? Control. Affirmative. Tag the coordinates for recovery and proceed into the cave. Whitmore. We using live fire, Captain? Hughes. There might be hostiles, so yes. But keep them in single shot mode. Don't want the guns getting too hot. Cassidy. Good call. Don't want to end up like this guy. Whitmore. That's for sure. Agents ready their weapons and proceed. Approximately two minutes pass. Whitmore. Unintelligible. Control. Please repeat, Hughes. We didn't copy. Hughes. It's... There's a chamber in here, Control. I'd say five or six meters in diameter. It's filled with red ice. In the middle, there's a pool. Looks about three meters wide. Depth unknown. Cassidy. The fuck hap- Screams are heard. Gunfire. Control. Hughes, come in. Are there hostiles? There is a brief pause. Hughes. Fucking hell. Negative. Control. Just a po- a fucking polar bear. It's dead. There's dozens of bodies here. Not human. I see a few seals, a snow fox, and a- what the hell? Whitmore. The fuck is that? Cassidy. No, 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 no. Oh god. Control. Hughes? Do you copy? Hughes. Cassidy found a- um, a spider? A giant spider. There is a pause, during which shuffling and hard breathing are heard. Control. Is it alive? What do you mean by giant? Hughes. I mean fucking huge. Control. At least a meter leg span. It's frozen. Wait, no. Shit. I don't see anything inside. It's almost like it's made of this stuff. Cassidy. Unintelligible. Not possible. We're nowhere close to Germany. Whitmore. What? What about Germany? Cassidy. Captain, I'm pretty sure that's 3023. Control. Repeat, Captain. Hughes. Cassidy said the spider is SCP-3023. Control. There is a pause. Control. That's not possible, Hughes. Why would she think that? Cassidy. Voice elevated. I'm sure, Control. I've worked with 3023. It's an instance made of Skip 9. Whitmore. Wait, what's 3023? Control. That is classified. Agent Cassidy, you are to speak no more of this. If the specimen is destroyed, there is no reason to worry about it. Please continue your search. Cassidy, mumbling. But how the fuck did it get here? Hughes, we copy, control. Cassidy, sweep the perimeter. See if there's any side tunnels. Cassidy. But- Hughes. That's an order. Cassidy. Unintelligible. Hughes. Check these corpses. See if they're any human. Whitmore. On it. Control. Agent Hughes, how deep is the pool you mentioned? Hughes. Can't see the bottom. God. I'm having SCP-354 flashbacks. This is not cool. Control. Focus, Captain. Is there anything nearby you can use to measure the depth? Hughes. Pauses. Well, the spider has a spear sticking out of it. Control. Can you safely retrieve it? Hughes. The suit should protect me, right? Control. All the same. Try not to touch the affected material. Hughes. All right, I've got it. Should work. Looks to be about 1.5 meters long. Control. Copy that, Hughes. Proceed with caution. There is a pause. Hughes. Well, it's definitely more than a meter deep. I could go further, but I'd have to get my hand closer to the stuff. Suit or no suit. I'd prefer not to do that. Control. Affirmative, Captain. We'll dispatch some D-Class with gear to test that out. Continue your search. 
Hughes, copy that. Well, I guess I'm... Cassidy, voice distant. Captain. Hughes, stand by control. What is it, Cassidy? Cassidy, voice distant. I think you're gonna want to see this, sir. I think I know where the spider came from. Hughes, control, I'm going deeper in the cave. Control. Affirmative. Proceed. Approximately one minute of boots crunching on ice and packed snow. Hughes. Oh, that's not good. Control. What do you see, Captain? Hughes. A... an aperture. About a meter in diameter. It's covered in the stuff. Cassidy. Ten seconds of silence. Hughes. Report. Control. Do you have a visual of Agent Cassidy? Hughes. No. Shit, she must have gone inside. Control. Please remain calm. Describe this aperture. Hughes. I, uh, it just looks like a tunnel, but there's no ice past the mouth, red or otherwise. I can make out a dim light coming from somewhere inside. Might be Cassidy's torch. Control. Is there anything else unusual? Hughes. Cassidy. Cassidy. Control. Captain Hughes, please respond. Is there anything else unusual about the tunnel? Hughes. Yeah, it's... it's wet. The walls are, and the floor. There's a puddle about a meter down. Shit, it's... the puddle is red. A few minutes of breathing and shuffling noises. Hughes. Control. Did you get that? Control. Affirmative. Stand by. Thirty seconds of breathing, followed by approaching footsteps. Whitmore. Yo, what's up? Where's Cassidy? Hughes. She went in there. Whitmore. Yo, Cassidy. All aback, girl. 30 seconds of silence. Hughes. Unintelligible. Control. I'm going in there. Control. Negative, Hughes. We're rerouting a team of D-Class for recovery. Your orders are to withdraw the rest of your team and await further orders. Hughes. Whitmore. Whoa, hold up. Take it easy. Control. You have your orders, Hughes. I don't think I need to remind you. 45 seconds of silence. Hughes. Copy. Control. Let's go. End log. Doctor's note. They never found Cassidy. Red ice is essentially just red water, and water is a universal solvent. This makes red ice one of the deadliest SCPs, and I'm stunned that they've decided to keep it Euclid. Even if it is at sight, it can't hold it forever, especially given the risks involved. If this thing gets out, it, it basically can't be stopped. I don't understand why we haven't tried to eliminate this, or at least raise it to Keter level. If the Sarkites were ever to hear about this, I can guarantee that they would unleash a full-scale attack trying to get a sample of 009. If they're able to mix a viral load with 009, it's over. If they mix the zombie plague with 009, it's even more over. I'm going to submit this SCP one more time for Keter classification. It's necessary we take another step of precaution when it comes to this SCP. Dr. Z, out.